Mm. Good afternoon and welcome to this Friday's App Clinic. My name's Ray Termeyer. I'm joined by Ian Nee Lewis and exe senior executive producer Alex Lucas. On uh, the engineering panel we have Daniel Pham, our NFL expert, and today we're going to be looking at football apps. Now if you're uh, watching us live, first Thanks for sticking through the completely screwed up intro that engineer Daniel has provided us, because he's usually great, but not today. Um, and second, if you have any questions for us or any comments that you want make you want to make during the show, uh, engineer Alex is uh, I'm sorry, producer, senior vice executive producer Alex is uh, standing by on the YouTube live stream, so he's actually watching the comments as they go by. He's checking to make sure that we're not, you know, going all fuzzy or muted or, you know, distorted or anything. But uh, at the same time, he can watch your comments and uh, pass them along to us if you uh, say anything interesting. So I'm really excited today uh, that you guys decided to do football. The, uh, the football season is in full swing. And so uh, I've been away from Australia for a while. So I wanted to kick off and find out exactly how the, uh, the football teams are doing. Uh, so I've got this app here, Aussie Rules nice. Live, which is which is really good. Um, See, when you said this. Aussie Rules Live, I thought this was going to be a Black Sabbath concert. Interesting. Yes. No. Uh, no. So this is. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, if, if you, switch to if the you uh, switch to the phone there, the rather phone than the there. tablet or Guys, yourself. Uh, I'm gonna move the camera. Very uh, slick. Nice. Excellent. Yeah, that's not really what we had in mind. No, this is pretty good. I mean, it's got some. It's got some sort of uh, iPhoney stylings here, and we have kind of the action bar. But you know, but it's not. It's not exactly it's still... football. It has something about Australia in it. Well, yeah, Australian football. That's what you guys are talking about footy, right? Yeah. See, that's the thing. Any any sport that can be abbreviated to something that sounds like you put it on a baby <laughs> when they go to sleep. Uh, is not a sport. It's in not my working book. for you. All right. No. Oh, no. okay. Sorry. I mean, it's an easy mistake to make, right? I'm right. from I'm from the the west coast of Australia, so football. No, oh, west coast. <laughs> that explains the whole thing. It does. It does. But okay. So we're not talking about uh, about Aussie rules. So obviously, um, we've I've I thought this through. Um, so I've got this rugby app, um, which is great. Um, works. It's it's not quite as nice a display. We don't have the action bar here. We kind of got the old school tabs. Um, but yeah, similarly, we've not really getting it. Uh, no. Who the the slippers? The blues? Yeah, yeah. Brumbies here. Breads. Yeah. The hurricanes. Uh, possibly. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, no, this isn't this doing isn't, it for no, me either. That's no, Daniel, you feeling it? I have. I have no idea what Ray talking about. Okay, yeah, so you're talking I, I, I know. Football, like, but you're not are, talking are, Aussie rules or rugby. Well, who who do you prefer, war or woofer? In um, the in the Alliance Stadium match, you know, I'm glad to I know that it, it's not just in America that we totally <laughs> sell out our stadiums. Oh no! Try again, foreign boy. All right. Oh, well, okay. So I've made a, a common mistake here. I assumed that when you guys were talking football, you meant something like this, because obviously, what a lot of people think of as football, you call soccer, but I did think this through, so I, I have um, I have some other football apps. See, here. I knew you were going to try this. <laughs> well, and what's that, eh? I, I knew you were going to try and, and pull in that whole rest of the world football thing. Well, we have a lot and of And I know exactly coming. why, because you know that our main, our primary audience is in Austria. This is true. We have a lot of Austrian viewers, so yep. thanks for tuning in. Shout out to you guys. Um, so I don't know if we've got the Austrian league here. I, sh I should go through, because I'm surprised. Oh, yeah, I think that's the Austrian flag. Um, so there we go. So we can see, we can uh, we can drill in. Um, the actual app itself, again, we've kind of got this pseudo action bar with the refresh button, which I know you're not a fan of. Back button, which you know what? should be an app. You know what? Important. I give up. Fine. <laughs> We're not doing your Aussie thing, <laughs> but I, I get it, okay? Okay. We've got, we've got enough non-US audience here that uh, probably because every programmer in the US, except for you and me, has been laid off. <laughs> uh, Fine, we'll okay. do a mix. I was excited. I was excited because the NFL is starting their season. Oh, the NFL! Yeah, oh, you the know F the niffle. Is the F for football? It I didn't realize is. you guys had a kicking game that you were uh, that you were proud of. Oh, that's great. It's not just kicking, actually. There's all sorts of interaction between feet and uh, hands and <laughs> balls. <laughs> so, 
let's go ahead and take a look at a few uh, apps from the from the NFL, from okay. the, the American right. football. Let's have a look at this. We can. Uh, uh, it'll be an education. Everything I know from uh, American football is from Friday Night Lights. So uh, this should, should be an education. Yeah, well, they play high school rules there, don't they? Well, they were in yeah, high those school, are people so I, w- I, would, I would assume yeah. so. All right, so let's uh, let's get ready for the uh, NFL season. We're we going to crack good. open an American beer. Interesting. Don't we need yep. a don't we need like a tailgate, maybe a, a grill? Is there a grill around here? No, but I've already spilled beer on the table, so I think we are I off to an to excellent start. start. Yeah. All right. Let's, right. uh, so what do you want to start with? You guys are the okay. uh, the NFL experts. Um, well, let's actually we uh, start with um, one of the NFL apps. Um, okay. We have that one. Mm. So um, if we go over to the tablet, one of the uh, one of the apps that I thought was really impressive um, is NFL Preseason Live. Oh, nice. Now, the thing about NFL Preseason Live, it has really terrible reviews. Hmm. Uh, and there was one really good reason for that. And it's that uh, on ICS and Up, uh, actually on Honeycomb and Up, the video playback was really, really sketchy. Now, sadly, this is because uh, previous to Honeycomb, they were actually using their own uh, playback engine uh, for their HTB live streaming. And post Honeycomb, they went ahead and, uh, yeah, well, there we go, post Honeycomb. Um, they went ahead and used our playback engine, and it turns out that ours was a little less resilient than theirs. Uh, they, had some, they had some streams that uh, had a little bit of, uh, okay, so I think we're going to need to switch to the regular camera here, because as soon as we start playing video, it switches over to full screen mode. You may want to zoom out just a touch, I think. So what they'd done is they'd had a few um, a few streams where the audio part of it was malformed, and it crashed our decoder. Perfect. And then it was uh, unable to recover. So once we got rid of that problem, everything was OK. Nice. Uh, and I, I like the app. There's a few problems with it, mm-hmm. but the, the basic concept is really cool. So what you're getting here is we start a, uh, we start a game. You can look at any game that's already played, or I believe you can look at them live. I haven't had the time to, to check it out live myself. Uh, and when you um, now, here's what's going to happen, and this is this is the problem that we've seen in the past: is we actually can't get the video now mm-hmm. because the uh, because that one stream crashed it. Gotcha. You okay. gotta, you gotta kind of right. know. So once which, you have the crash, then you're uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Let's go ahead and just pretend that video is it's playing. Probably it's best probably that it's best, not dead, yeah. Because the man might get up. You know, we should have just said that well. to begin with. Yeah, should have been like, oh, yeah, we blacked it out because yeah. of the man, because yeah. we're that good. Exactly. Well, this is well done. We, we can actually see the video here, but I, I believe it's not coming across because Daniel uh, is blacking it right. out in real time. Yes, exactly. Nice. Good, good save. Okay, so what you can see, though, this. is they've actually got uh, a whole list of all the plays that happened in the game. It's a little, it took a while to figure it out, but these. The orange circles basically means there's some ball movement. Um, and then you get, uh, I think, a triangle for a turnover. Um, you get, uh, if it's blue, it means they scored. You know, so, that, like, for instance, here's the 20-yard uh, yeah, field, field goal. goal there. And what's really cool about it is you can go down here and see where the, the plays are that you want to look at. And then if you click over here, um, then it'll actually bring that up on the video. Oh, nice. Yeah, it'll take you right to it. So, so all those are bookmarks. it's basically like a, an index uh, for, yeah. for every play. Yeah, and it works really well. It's nice. The, the main problem that I have with it is, first, it's a little bit cryptic. Like, there was, mm. there's nothing that tells you what the little markings mean, et cetera. Yeah, right. And second, um, if you can see the difference between my quite normally sized finger and the touch target, it, it is a little it on the small yeah, side. It's, it's definitely not hit yeah. following that 48 pixel rhythm, which we're right. you know, kind of expecting. Yeah, well, not 40, 48 dp. 48 dp, I should right. say, yeah. And as, as well, I'm... Does clicking anywhere uh, do the shortcut, or do you have to specifically hit the... Uh, Actually, clicking anywhere does as long as it thing. has the little... Uh, a little on triangle. That, that, that means sense. that there's a, an index. Now, I, I would probably prefer a different icon yeah. because we've always thought that uh, when you have a triangle pointing one way, that means that you're either going to slide mm. uh, or, and see content that's, that's hidden over on the right, uh, or maybe the triangle is going to turn and you're going to get some things some beneath sort of it. I mean, there's some, there's some pretty well accepted user interface guidelines mm. uh, that users you're going to have an expectation around. Whereas in this case, all it does is click and 
and put the video at a different place. Yeah, it's, it's not even always the right place, to be perfectly honest, but it's, it's always close. close. Enough. It, yeah. it feels like a, a pretty obvious icon to use instead would be, in fact, a, a video camera or something like that. Sure. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you know, or some sort of a bookmark icon, oh, I yeah. think, would be that fine, too. That could work too. as well. There's some sort of uh, indicator, because you know, clicking here, you kind of assume that, uh, that it's going to be a drill down. You're going to get more uh -huh. detail on, on that particular play. Right, Whereas right. the video is, is probably better, but mm -hmm. there's sort of no clue. Now, the other thing that I would love to have is some sort of uh, sorting ability. Um, you can sort, for instance, on scores, but you'll notice that that removes the bookmarking mm, functionality. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a shame, because that's kind of going to be the highlight that you're going to look for. Absolutely. You know, like For me, uh, I'm all about the passing game, so I'd really like to just see all the big passes. Sure, that makes sense. And I, I found myself, literally, for this game, just sort of scrolling through and looking for like a, a yardage number. Yeah. Oh, 15 yards. Yeah, maybe I want to see that. Well, it yeah. seems like there's a lot of information going on on this, on this screen. Um, mm -hmm. But what really isn't clear is exactly, like you have to kind of read everything in order to yes. see anything. Um, and so you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of trying to read the, uh, the scrolling output from like a role-playing game or something. You remember right, those old school stuff? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it actually reminds me of, uh, so I'm a, a cricket fan. Uh, I'm going to want to review cricket apps at some point, but it, it's the same sort of thing where you have sort of constant, you know, six balls and over. It's just constant whatever happened. Um, and in those now, live I, I just want to cut in, uh, Rayto, and, and just, just remind the viewers that you have the power on this show. We, we do listen to reader comments or viewer comments. We do abide uh, in general by viewer votes uh, when we're um, reviewing apps. So you have the power to stop the cricket madness. <laughs> <laughs> or if indeed to force the cricket madness, if, if that is uh, your inclination. Indeed. Um, so anyway, so the point is is that uh, you know a lot of people follow the cricket just by watching the live commentary. Um, and so they've kind of optimized that process of having the most important thing first. So the mm -hmm. number of runs scored uh, off each particular ball is the first thing you see. Or if, mm -hmm. it, if the person was out, then that's the first thing you see in it. I'd like to see the same thing here. So the, uh, the distance passed seems like that would be the most important thing on a completed play. Yeah. Uh, or in fact, scoring seems like it should be something that should be, mm -hmm. you know, fairly obvious. Yeah, but you can see it, it feels like they, they actually haven't taken a huge amount of care here because mm -hmm. if you look at this, it actually even repeats some information. You know, this mm -hmm. is the uh, time on the clock, and then the time on the clock is the first thing you see here as yeah, well. Right. So I, I think this, this feels like they're just pulling it off their news feed of some kind. Yeah. At the same time, although it could be presented in a, in a slightly nicer format, this is some great information. Oh, absolutely. So it's a yeah, really this is useful just a app. presentation thing at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the app itself is, is obviously hugely useful uh, to, to any sports fan. It's really just a case here of, of trying to, you need to make this text bigger, you need to make the touch targets bigger, and then expand the text. Because I think all of you guys watching can see that um, you'd be pretty lucky if you can read any of this from the camera. Um, and in fact, as soon as you sort of sit back from it, you're checking to make sure your prescription is still valid. Right. It's, uh, it's small. Yeah, <laughs> and, and on a Nexus 7, it's it's even less useful. I can useful imagine. It's very, very difficult this to use. This is a pretty big tablet as tablets go these days. Mm -hmm. So you really want to have that um, bigger. And, and in fact, there's no there's no need. Like What they've kind of optimized for here is to have as many plays on screen at a time. And that's probably not what you want to optimize for, right? Yeah, I think you're right. I, th I think it, rather than seeing uh, a huge number of plays where I have to carefully read each one, I'd rather have the information presented so that I can scan it mm. so quickly that flicking this up and down will actually be useful. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, so if I see, and and you can see they've done a little bit, like I can flick this up and down and when I see this little bluish green mm. color go by, uh, even if it's moving very fast, I can see that because it stands out from the rest of everything. Yeah, absolutely. So bravo on that count. Now take that idea and extend it out to the rest of this particular UI and I think you've got a real winner. And in fact, what I would say is you've, you've actually got the right idea here. So if we look over here on this side, you can actually see that they've got this really rich and, and large touch targets. That's probably about the size you want. And, and the same way that they've got their sort of background bleed image, that'd be kind of cooler than having this done here. All right? So you could mm -hmm. have the same UI element over on this side with a big, you know, rather than having this sort of small logo, you have that background effect, bigger text, um, more dramatic um, you know, view. Particularly because even here we've got light gray on slightly darker gray. You're supposed to be able to read it, make it stand out, put it in bold, make it bright white against black, you know, whatever you like. But uh, I would say something like this over on this yeah, side over would be on much the left more readable. Great, isn't that this, looks fantastic. Isn't it, yeah, it's just beautiful. I'm really impressed. So I think I just want to say one more thing about this app, and that's about the top of the app there. Yeah, absolutely. 
Go ahead. No, no, please. You. Oh no, I just, I just, I was just feeding you lines. <laughs> I'm feeding them. And I'm running. Oh, I like this. Yeah. yeah. Um, I need a blocker. So we kind of got this. It's not an action bar. It's a title bar, and you, you it's kind of all wrong, right? I mean, this is a. Whoop. Okay, I can move oh my head. Oh man, all of a sudden I'm being Dan Galpin. Yeah, I gotta watch the concert longer. <laughs> huh? uh, yeah, so it, it, this this up the top, and, and even here where you're looking at the uh, at these sort of almost tabs, turn them into actual tabs so that I stop having to do scare quotes. And and this title bar should really be an action bar. Mm -hmm. um, so things like uh, settings. So if I if I hit this, uh, so yeah. yeah, I don't even know where to start. So this should all be in an overflow menu, and it shouldn't be this weird drop-down pop-up thing. It should just be a standard menu of forms. Now, as far as I know, this is a tablet app, uh, an app for tablets only. Is that right? Right. OK, so you don't actually have an excuse not to use the action bar, because yeah. you don't have to worry about backwards compatibility. You don't have to worry about how your menu is going to work on, on other devices. You just make it an action bar. Um, and so this, all of this stuff, it's fair enough to perhaps put this in settings, um, but settings should kind of always be in the overflow menu. I'm not quite sure what the question mark is going to do. Oh, hello. Yeah. So it's like uh, on-screen tips. That's actually not bad. Um, yeah. I, I don't know that I'd make it a primary action. Again, I'd probably stick that into an overflow menu and maybe display this the first time the app came up. Uh, I don't know if it did. Yeah, I, I, I will say that, in general, if you find if you find that it's necessary to show something like this, mm -hmm. it is probably a good clue uh, telling you that you're a little too you're, complex. Yeah, you're not you're not doing a good UI. Yeah, things should be as intuitive as possible. You know, you shouldn't have to explain to users how things work. You should just be able to plonk this down in front of someone who understands NFL, and they're able to start sort of getting, you know, involved in the app. And in fact, when we do sort of internal reviews for apps, we find the ones which we like the best are the ones where, rather than everyone sitting down and, and sort of nitpicking which pixel should be a different color, we're all sort of actually using the app. Um, and sort of getting involved in that. Uh, I'm sure it's a similar experience for when you guys have done games reviews Absolutely. as well. Right? Yeah. Uh, and that's what you want. You want it so that people aren't going, so wait, how did you get to that screen? What, what did you do just there? It's just like, I'm too busy yeah. getting engaged. And an yeah, app like this is really, so much content. Right? You really need to do some user testing. Mm. Sit down with somebody, um, not, and I can't emphasize this enough, don't sit down with some random guy who is probably carrying a Blackberry or an iPhone. <laughs> Sit down with somebody who's used to using an Android tablet. You know, sit down with somebody who's actually your target market mm. for an Android application and watch them use it. And if they start swiping their finger across things that are unswipeable and getting frustrated, that's your first clue. Yeah, that's a sign. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, I saw a little tip. So we can yeah, slide so here. So this is quite slide. nice, right? So you can slide between weeks, yeah? yeah Three weeks. The, the only four. thing I don't really like about it is that um, I think that it's not obvious enough where you're at. Like, if you mm. look at most of the. Uh, View pagers uh, that we've put out, they have some sort of indication of where you are. It's either the little yeah. dots like you see on, yeah, a, on the home screen, or it's uh, you know a, a tabs or something like yeah, that. Yeah, particularly because so it, it gives like you that, that indication of whether you, you know how far along you are. Now, obviously, at this yeah. side, it's obvious that there isn't anything before. Pr well, no, see, there is, uh, and that's interesting. So. Well, it's it's wrapping around. It is, uh, and particularly so. I'm, I'm at pre week one, and it seems intuitive that there isn't anything before the first pre week, but there is. You know, we've got the Hall yeah. of Fame, um, and then we're back to pre week four, which is again kind of wrapping funny. Around, how yeah, we're doing a wrap around. I don't know that you yeah, want to do. I that. wouldn't have made that choice, no. but you know, whatever. But yeah, that's it's a call. I mean, it's, it's uh, valid. It's just not. Now here, it's, it's I, also, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You're going to uh, yeah, I'm going to sacrifice my my Android Camp hoodie to save your. Google my, Labs, my lab, lab coat. coat. Well, it seems like the lab coat should be the God thing which... God knows they're not making any more of them. <laughs> True enough. Um, so the other thing I'd point out as well is, I mean, this is a, a pretty fast device, and this scrolling is not the smoothest. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there might be something you can do there to, to optimize that scroll speed. And anything which makes the app feel a little janky really detract, detracts from the user experience. So yeah. you know, when you are designing things, everything should be as smooth as it possibly can be. Yeah, and this is... A lot of times, what we see is people are, are either uh, using a regular view inefficiently, mm. or they're using a web view mm. to do some of this. The other thing that's actually uh, a good tip for many devices, though not all, which also happens to line up nicely with our design guidelines, is if you put a little less emphasis on the gradients mm. here, uh, especially if that's something that you're adding in after the fact, in general, most Android apps and the Android UI 
tries to be sort of simplified and flat. We mm. don't go for the bubbly look. Yeah. Um, and there are devices in the field that, possibly because of that, are not actually very good at drawing gradients. Mm. Yeah, this is true. I, I um, did an experiment myself with a compass app, and just uh, you know, if you do it flat, it all renders really quickly. As soon as you try and put like a, a glass top on top of it, everything slows down. Well, you got to remember that anytime you're drawing a, a gradient or a glassy look or anything mm. like that, you're you're touching the pixels twice as often. Yeah, and in many cases, uh, devices are fill bound, and that literally does make it half as fast. There you go. Um, all right, so the only other thing we've got here, so we've got these tabs. These should probably be actual tabs rather than these weird pseudo tabs. Mm -hmm. um, and again, basically this idea of the, the text being difficult to parse easily, um, being small and, and not of high contrast is probably something you want to look at throughout. Yeah. All right, shall we, uh, shall we move on? Yes, yeah? let's do so. All right, let's have a look. All right, well, I think that. Uh, the, the top rated apps uh, this week by viewers were actually the uh, football app, football the, uh, apps, the, yes. the soccer apps. The, oh. Yes, the football with a round ball app. Excellent. And in fact, I think, no, this international rules football also uses a round ball. I was going to say soccer is the only one which does, but it's not quite true. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's have a look at, uh, at FootMob Pro, which I think was one of the top, uh, one of the top Yes. resulting ones. I'll try and go back to the home screen. Uh, so looking at this straight away, so this is, this is a popular app. And I would suggest that one of the main reasons for that is because it's very useful. You can get all the soccer scores from basically whichever league you want to watch, including the, uh, the Major League Soccer. Oh, good. Let's see if uh, my favorite team, Real Salt Lake, is in there. <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently not. Back so, we go. so that's that's one thing to be concerned of straight away is that I'm not entirely sure what this icon represents, but clicking it should take you to something. Um, I kind of assumed it would be rankings, which makes sense. The very fact that it didn't appear for the MLS suggests that we're American pulling this down. American soccer sucks. Could be. It could be. I don't actually mean that. Of course, American soccer is the greatest, just like anything American, <laughs> uh, compared to. Most Australian things is what I'm saying. Oh, nice. Yeah. Austrian, let's, of course. I, let's let's pick on the Australians. We're all asleep right now. Let's do that. <laughs> Seems reasonable enough. All right. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know why that's not showing up. But well, I it think would it's be nice just to failing something. to pull down the data, yeah. right? And so you want to have some indication here that it's loading. Um, right. Now I'm not a big fan of loading dialogues or anything like that, but there should be some indication that hey, I'm trying to pull down data, and if it fails, mm -hmm. saying. Ah, I tried to, but for whatever reason, I can't get the information. Yeah. Now, I will say that the iconography of this interface is uh, a little puzzling to me. And you're going to have to you know, just check me on this. Because uh, obviously, I, you know, I, I don't actually follow soccer. Um, sure. you know, maybe this is all totally old hat to you. But uh, I see this, this thing here. And mm -hmm. I think, well, that maybe looks like a list. I don't know. Um, and then, oh, no, apparently. I don't know uh, what I did there, the and then I get touch here, targets. and then apparently uh, this baby over here that it to me it looked like a uh, what I would call a soccer ball, but I was uh, going to go with Mickey that's Mouse. That's actually the top scorers. Button. Interesting. So, so that wouldn't have been obvious to me either. Really? Um, yeah. yeah. No, definitely so not. I would have thought maybe yeah. the opposite. Like if it's uh, top scorers, would have been a person, or maybe even a person kicking, or maybe even a goal. I don't know. There's a, there's a few options there, but definitely yeah. the iconography needs work. The idea of having the action bar here is reasonable, but again, you know, I would go with a more standard up affordance rather than this pseudo back button. Um, it's yeah. confusing. Is it an up button? Is it a back button? Is it different from the back button down the right. bottom? It's not quite right. Yeah, that's a different. Uh, uh, you know, longtime viewers of the show know that uh, I've never been completely comfortable with the idea that something pointed to, pointing to the left is actually taking me up. Mm. Oh, that's but because this is an affordance, you see, rather than right. just a button. Exactly. And affordance sounds like something you live in if you're on a fixed income. But it really does. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> uh, so, but, but the point is that, that that space is, as of honeycomb, reserved for something that will take you to the previous point mm. in the view hierarchy of the application, yeah. as opposed to the previous screen that you were on before, which is what the system back button is for. Exactly. And the general iconography for that is that it should have uh, something akin to your application icon in general, That's mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. uh, with like a left chevron. Exactly. So. 
uh, and in which in this case we've kind of you know bounced before between uh, what looks like a back button and what looks like a down button. So I guess this is an attempt at a yeah. at an overflow menu, but on the wrong side. You think? Well, we're choosing leagues, so it's kind of settings here at this point, right? Okay, but that's the only thing, right? I mean, it's not yeah. like choose leagues and a bunch of other stuff. That's, that's true. Just, that's yeah. true. So either way, I, you know, I think you really want to redesign this into something more like an action bar. So mm -hmm. you know, once you go into the app, you've got some sort of iconography on the top saying oh, what yeah, the app is. To, now, see, of course, like all good Android users, I'm swiping. You are swiping. There's a really good reason for people to swipe. First, in Android, tabs go on top. Mm. You can see they've, oh. they've already violated. Yeah. Uh, and of course, that makes one thumb navigation more difficult, mm -hmm. which we've solved by adding the swipe action. Absolutely. So even though that might feel a little bit like a you know an Ambrose Beast beer uh, short story, um, yeah, I ruined that by not even saying it right. Yeah, uh, it was almost really good. Yeah, it could have been. Um, you are uh, you, you end up having having to move your thumb all around. You know, I want to get to tomorrow. Why can't I get to tomorrow by swiping? swiping it to just tomorrow? seems like the normal thing, right? Absolutely, yeah. So you really you want to eliminate these and replace them with something which is more like a, a view pager type setup um, straight away. Move right. move this into an action bar which sits on the top right. Get rid of this whole wow. Let's have a look here. So get rid of this whole sort of down chevron button for choosing leagues. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's something which you want users to do, then make it an action. If it's something which they should be able to do but don't want to do very often, then it should probably sit under settings in the overflow menu. Yeah. Um, but either way, sort of, it looks really weird. And I do recognize it as uh, an, an, a glyph that we used to use in a version of Android at some point. I vaguely I, you remember know what, back You're, you're absolutely Cupcake. right. Uh, yeah, it was, it the was drop back in the, like, right, the Cupcake and Claire days back when we didn't have any designers, and mm. we were basically just stealing art off the internet. Just making it up as we went right, along. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. Uh, Sad. Yeah, none of that stuff looked good. I'm, I'm just going to call that right now. It really it, didn't. And that's the, yeah. the beauty of the new stuff is that it really does. We've got an incredible design team now, yeah. which have really spent a lot of time and effort thinking about how to make stuff look awesome. Um, so when you can, take advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, we see the same thing here as we saw in, this, in the, uh, the previous app, where you've got really small touch targets and really small text. And, and again, like we're looking at the league here. There's no reason why we can't scroll more if we have to. See, this is what I love about American soccer, by the way. We've we got Real Salt Lake, mm -hmm. uh, which I just can't laugh enough about. I can't, um, I can't bring myself great. to even say that. To me, that uh, has to be Real Salt but, Lake. But what about this uh, CD Tivas USA? I mean, what, what does that even mean? Is it, I mean, I is it because they're the owned time. by the, the Scotch company? Or is there something called a chiva, of which this is the plural? <laughs> which this is, I, it could be. They I are the know. chivas. Do we have uh, anybody, uh, producer Alex, do we have anybody on YouTube that knows the answer to this mystery? Nobody's commenting. If anyone nobody's, Wait, understands. nobody's commenting at all? Or, sorry, no, nobody's commenting. Nobody's answering your question. Oh, OK. See. Are they seeing stuff about us? Not really, no. <laughs> is, is anyone watching? Right, Hello? yeah. Is this thing on? people are watching. Nice. Hey, guys. Also, how do you like my haircut? Do you notice I got a football haircut? True story. And I've got a football grin, too. <sighs> Terrifying. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I was trying to figure out what the story was between uh, behind CD Chivas earlier today, and I could not for the life of me figure it out. Um, I don't even know where they, where they play. I don't know. It's a mystery. The good news is that uh, the San Jose Earthquakes, which is, I guess, our local team, is, oh, yeah. uh, is, is leading the Western League. So. Awesome. Yeah, right down there in San Jose. Absolutely. Yep. Right so, next yeah. to all the used car dealerships and the uh, check cashing places. Sweet. Which, uh, Go but, Earthquakes. Yeah, Paycheck cashing place is uh, San Jose's second largest uh, business. Is that right? Yeah. What's its top business? Uh, is that uh, safe for work? I think it's Adobe. Ah, that'd do it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Well, there you go. And, so, and this is the problem, right? And this is a really good tip. If you find that your users are exiting the app unexpectedly, then your navigation is broken. Um, and that's the sort of thing we see the most frequently, where people are using, mul like you've got multiple tabs here, and so you're jumping around, and you're choosing different things, and then you get back to here, and you've You've pressed a bunch of buttons. Yeah, I, I want to go back to where I was. And you can't quite remember where you started. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I want to go back to, to just the list of things. And it's like, oh, yeah. wait, no, that wasn't it. Yeah. it although, was, although it's somewhat telling that I wasn't disappointed <laughs> in that particular result. <laughs> yeah. This is actually kind Maybe. of a problem with, with uh, sports apps in general. We, we just had a, um, a talk on Thursday 
internally about some sports apps. Mm. And one of the things that, that I think we all agreed on is that these are incredibly challenging because they have to present a gargantuan amount of information. Mm. I mean, sports, if you think about just how much information needs to be presented and all of the different ways that you can slice it and dice it, it is a serious UI challenge. Absolutely. But that's a great reason to really think this through and to always follow Android UI guidelines mm -hmm. because the more you can make it like all other Android apps, uh, the more you can make consistent UI decisions that people are going to expect, the more usable your app's going to be. And you have to target usability because you've got so much to present that your app out of the gate is already confusing. Absolutely. I mean, anything which is so rich in data runs that risk. And so it's really, the navigation is probably your biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, I mean, the app itself is pretty good. You know, you've got your stats, you've got your scores, um, you know, all of this sort of stuff. Really, the, the key here is that this whole app just kind of needs a navigation refresh mm -hmm. and, and a UI refresh, uh, something to bring it up to standard with sort of your, your ICS type, um, type imagery and, and, and layouts. Yeah. And I'm just going to make one other comment on the, you know, just, the the gradients here, mm. uh, I don't like that. I, I think yeah. it's unnecessary. And and the thing is, I'm a big fan of gradients. I think I think sure. gradients can look really incredible. And um, and a lot of times they're much better than a flat screen. But a, they are a little bit tired right now. They're, they're sort yeah. of be they've been done. They're kind of the lens flare of the tw of the tens. Right. But more than that. Gradients look good in isolation. When you stack a bunch on top of each other like yeah. this, then the eye starts picking up this pattern, and it, it ends up looking kind of cheesy. It does. It really does. You know, if you're not going to have them sort of you know, f flowing between different colors like some sort of old school like jukebox type scenario, then uh, yeah, it's, it's just going to be distracting instead. Right. Uh, so in fact, if you look at some of the things that we've done with gradients that I think were very attractive, mm -hmm. uh, we've done things like take a list and then put a continuous gradient all the way down the screen behind it. Mm -hmm. um, that's also fairly expensive. So Absolutely, it's not yeah. easy to do, and not all devices can handle it, but it looks fantastic. Whereas just stacking these up like this is Okay. Yeah, it's it's we a waste. We have a couple questions on the stream, actually. Awesome. We awesome. would awesome. love to yeah, answer please. some live questions. Okay. Uh, first, uh, Gerald Smith asks, uh, overflow menu, what does he mean by that? If you could describe what, go into a little more detail about what you're referring to when you say the overflow menu? Absolutely. So the uh, overflow menu is uh, the the extra menu options that you see on the action bar uh, when, let's have a look, we'll uh, fire up, what's a good app for the overflow menu? Play Store. Let's go with the Play it has, Store. It has an overflow menu. Okay, there you go. Perfect. So this is the overflow menu here. Let's try and, and just get to the standard action bar if we can. Um, so here we've got the action bar. This is your typical actions, and then everything which is behind that menu button is the overflow menu. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where you want to put things which users need to get to, but it's probably not the most important thing. So settings, uh, anything like about, account information, you know, the sorts of things that they have here are a perfect example of, of, of what you want to put in the overflow. Exactly. And it's worth uh, mentioning that the overflow menu contents can actually change. Now, in this mm. case, they, they haven't. Um, but there are apps where, given a little bit more horizontal space, you'd actually see more action icons over here on the right, uh, and then the overflow menu would have fewer options in it, Gmail, hmm. for instance. Yeah, so Gmail's so. a but good one. In general, what you want to do is think of your action bar as having two essential pieces. You know, one Over on the left, you've got the navigation piece, and that is split into your up affordance, in this case, uh, as we talked about the left chevron, mm -hmm. the icon, and usually some indication of where you're at. In this case, it's our yeah. search result in NFL. Uh, and then potentially another navigational piece, like a drop down. Yeah. Uh, and then over on the right, you've got the second major portion of your action bar, which is the action piece. And that's going to be a set of icons. If, uh, if you want, you can put text here as well, although that's usually not quite as effective. It mm -hmm. certainly takes up more horizontal space. Yeah. And then the overflow. Now you will also see uh, on some devices, on some apps, a menu that looks like the overflow menu mm. down here in the corner. Now we call that the menu button of shame. Yeah. And the reason is the only time you see that menu button is when you haven't updated your app for an SDK, a target SDK that's greater than Honeycomb. Absolutely. And so the most, oh, so now this is a this proper is, one of shame. Yes, so there's, there's two versions of this. There's the, uh, the unfortunate version, yeah. uh, where you've got an app 
and you haven't updated it yet, and so you haven't figured out how your pre-existing menu is going to work um, with an action bar. Mm -hmm. and, and so that takes a little bit of thought, um, so that's not good. But what this is, is the real, um, the real button of shame, which is here, and it, it does absolutely nothing. Um, so all you need to do is change your target SDK, and that will go away. You know, the worst thing is, on some devices uh, with, with custom UIs, having that button there will actually do a, a bunch of of layout changes. Too. Oh wow! You know, they'll actually put the uh, the menu button on over the top of the system buttons. Nice. So having that be empty is extremely unfortunate. Yeah. Now you've just <laughs> taken up screen real estate for absolutely no reason at all. Nice. Uh, okay. Was uh, was there another question? Yeah. Uh, Gerald says thanks. That, no worries, John. Uh, next question is from Ross Larson, who says, uh, "Can we talk about app permissions here? I couldn't install this year's version of the NFL Draft Tracker app because my app." Because my device didn't have an onboard GPS. Oh, you know, uh -huh. it, it's we would love to talk about app. In fact, we should do a, a complete show on app permissions. I think we, we will. I think we'll do an app, uh, uh, an office hours on permissions. Right, but the problem is we don't have any show called the Friday Rant. That's true. The Friday Rage. And we still haven't uh, gotten permission to utter pornography. You're, you're on for an hour a week. Profanity. That's, on that's the Friday utter Rant. Pornography. Interesting. Uh, it's quite pornography the Freudian and. Profanity. And profanity. That would uh, be are quite a show. with permission. Yeah. <laughs> uh, although I'm not 100 percent sure that he's asking for permission. There are also, there are also features that come into play. Here, right? Well, I think that's this is the uh, this is the issue is that uh, if you uh, request certain permissions, then for legacy reasons that implies a, a feature requirement mm -hmm. as well. And GPS is one of those. If if you request uh, either fine or course locate, well, no, if you request fine location, then uh, the system will imply that well, actually, you can probably meant to require a GPS as well. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. You know, Being unable to install that on a system that doesn't have a GPS is an indication that the app has done something that we consider to be sketchy. Uh, first, they haven't uh, made it so you can have uh, a, an optional permission mm -hmm. for that or an optional feature. But more importantly, they're requiring fine location, which is unusual and almost always indicates that they have an ad network that's attempting to track you at an inappropriate level. Yeah, this is true. I mean, obviously, it's going to depend on the app, and you're going to have to figure out based on you know, what they offer, if that makes sense. Um, and I suspect if it's, uh, you know, if it's anything which is displaying video, they may be using the find location to figure out where you are to make sure that they have the rights to show you that video in that location. Of course, location would do that as well, right? I mean, it should, in, be, in general, it should be at the very least city, uh, you know, accurate to a mm -hmm. city level, which should, should definitely be sufficient for anything the like rights. The thing, too, is, is if you if you are doing that, then um, that's it's totally insecure because you're just trusting the client to say where it's at. That could be hijacked so easily. So I think most video yeah. services probably will, a little bit clever. Will, than that. Well, the, in general, they'll do IP filtering, which is easy yeah, to right. spoof as well, but more costly. Yeah. Okay. So um, for for developers out there wondering how you get around this, you can simply specify a uh, user's feature and specify location as uh, as required false, which effectively makes it optional. Uh, and then within your app, you'll need to check to see whether or not there is a GPS or some form of location sensing hardware available before you make those uh, location update requests. And consider that not just for GPS, but for other things mm. that you may or may not find. For instance, a back-facing camera. Yeah, that's if a you good ask, one. Yeah. yeah, if you ask for a camera, well, uh, several devices, and the most important one to us being the Nexus 7, mm. do not have rear-facing cameras. And the rear-facing camera is what you get if you say you need a camera. I think that's a little confusing, honestly. It can be, but it's, it's one of those legacy-type deals where uh, you know when we put in the uh, the user's feature and, and permission for a camera, it, it was only rear-facing cameras. So uh, yeah. yeah. In general, I think the rule of thumb is don't ask for a feature or a permission unless your app depends on it. Absolutely. If, if that's what your app is all about. If, if all your app does is take photos, then by all means, say that a camera is required. But if your app has any other functionality, for right. instance, viewing sets of photos mm -hmm. or applying, applying hipster filters. effects yeah. to your photos, then don't require a camera because yeah. people might want to do that with the stuff that they've uploaded to Google Plus or yeah. the things that they've downloaded from their camera or whatever. Because mm. keep in mind, for those users, Nexus 7 users aren't going to be outraged to find that they can't take photos with your photo taking app, given that they have a device without a camera. Um, yeah. So People you definitely figure that out. They'll, they, yeah, exactly. They'll know what to expect. Um, so you want to give them as much as they can, so they can still do, um, you know, the other things. Okay. Now I'm just going to say we've we've covered uh, a grand total of two apps. It's which done is, well. And engineer Daniel is over there going like this. Going, I'm going to have engineer no time Daniel to set up this next show. He is the producer of the show. But 
That's because uh, engineer uh, because engineer Daniel's going to be on the next show, right? So he just doesn't want to have his time in the sun curtailed by uh, by us going true. over. That is very true. We, That's we are a on really to you, good Daniel. Point. Uh, the truth is, I think we've looked at what most of the apps in this category do. Um, you know pretty deeply yeah. feature-wise uh, and in terms of the mistakes that we've seen people make. So why don't we just really quickly uh, do a lightning round. Uh, we have DFB. Yeah, I think all, all of the sort of uh, sports uh, updates, news, and, and scores, I think, is, is are all going to be pretty much along the same lines. Yeah. Did, did you want to have a, a spend a couple of minutes looking at any of the fantasy football apps? Uh, I think we'd better not. I think yeah. I just, uh, you know, we, we, talked, we, we looked at the one app that had some things we didn't like about it. Mm. I think it'd be fair to, to look at some of these other apps because I think sure, they yeah. do things better or worse. You know, for instance, DFB, uh, despite the fact that it's completely in German, uh, I found myself liking it a lot more. Mm. It's just got a much more conventional yeah. style here. We've got a normal action bar with a normal layout, navigation on the left, swipeable view page. It, you know, looks nice. really nice. Yeah, it, 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 makes me, it makes me feel like I'm reading a sports page. Yes. Uh, this is a key, and this is again something we discussed internally. It's like the thing about any sports uh, news information is that imagery is really important to that. Mm -hmm. It's like we watch sports for, uh, for the imagery it contains, and so you want to have something which is like reading a magazine. Lots of images, lots of video, lots of full bleed um, content so that you're sort of you, you're sort of swiping through, looking at stuff, uh, and getting seeing what catches your eye. Um, yeah, I think that's exactly. really powerful. In fact, like the only thing that I would love to see is for these pictures here mm. to actually be larger. Um, Absolutely. Now we've we've complained some about apps that put text over images when that's inappropriate, especially mm -hmm. for you know, social apps, for instance, that yeah. have images that are user created. You never know exactly what you're going to get, Absolutely. but in this case, you do, and. It's almost always appropriate to bleed this through, just the yeah. way they've done it here. Exactly the way that you've got it here on the title. If it was just all of the uh, the items in that list done the same way, I think that would look fantastic. Now, did you see it just synced and the and the sync icon rotated automatically? Beautiful, very nice. Very nice. Uh, I don't know what this is. Um, <laughs> apparently nothing it's the, good. It's the crash button. It's uh, yeah, the quick but, exit button. Right, uh, um, but you can see they've done exactly what we ask in the action bar. Perfect. Which means. I know exactly how to use this application. I know that I'm going to see actions up here. I know if I want to share, it's going to be there. I'm guessing this is making the text bigger or smaller. That's nice. Makes sense. If I want to save this for later, yeah. what am I going to do? You're going to hit the star, right? Absolutely. Star button. Boom. It's kind of the Perfect. wrong color, but that's OK. And it probably wants star to be right. offset a little bit so that it doesn't hit it's the edges. It's probably one of those European star buttons. But you know, know I'm nitpicking at this everything's point. Everything's different over there. The, the other thing I'd also... Um, now, uh, it's a little crashy. crashy issues, yeah. And the, and the up affordance is a little... Mm, it's a little sketchy. Yeah, yeah, it's not quite right. The other thing I'd point out as well is that we have this mixture of, uh, of, of icon styles. So you can see here that we're presumably using the, the system built-in icons mm -hmm. for refresh and share. But the ones that these guys have built themselves are slightly different colored. So I don't know if this comes across on the video, but these are gray, and the custom ones here are white. It's really tough to get right. It is hard to get right, um, but it's, it's worth doing, and it's also worth doing them all yourself. So rather than depending on the system to provide some, um, use the system provided ones. I believe they're available for download from developer.android.com slash design these days. Um, and so you, this way, you don't have to worry about the system changing any of them on a, on a different implementation. Uh, although, hopefully, that won't happen. Nearly indeed, as much indeed. anymore, but yes. But it's it, particularly exactly with, uh, with different manufacturers putting skins on their devices, you never know for certain what icons they're going to provide. Um, exactly. So by providing them yourself, you have that security. Okay, and just really quickly, um, I think the last thing we were going to look at was the uh, live score thing. See, loading countries right there, my, my American sensibilities. Yeah, it's yeah out the I, window. Yeah. See, quick setup uh, should, be, uh, should be done automatically. Um, so, you know, again, you don't want to have to go through and, and do all of this the first time. You just want to jump straight into whatever you think is the most obvious. Now, whether that's choosing countries based on the current location, uh, using course location to get an idea, or just picking the countries which most people use, uh, all of those sorts of things are, are going to provide a better experience so that people can get started straight away. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow Real Salt Lake. Uh, just because like, that just gives me a... Okay, so in general, this uh, this has some good stuff going for it. Mm. It's got the you know, it's obviously syncing or something, but it's showing me something while yeah, it's yeah. You get data straight away, and that's right. really important. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's a really pretty 
They are. I love it's the nice. color. It's nice. Again, the texture is really, really it's a small. small. It's a, yeah, yeah. I think this is a common problem from people who are going, we have so much data, how do we display it all at once? Well, you don't have to display it at once. Right. Better to have fewer things on screen and let people do a flick scroll or a, or a the, left scroll. The very scroll. last thing that I want to mention is, although this looks like an action bar, mm -hmm. it's not. It, it doesn't, doesn't act bar. the way an action bar does. It doesn't have an up affordance. It doesn't have actions on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got navigation here, but one of the navigation things is more, uh. which does not include. It's not just navigation. Mm. And, and in fact, this is really most of most of this stuff should belong in the overflow menu. Exactly. Yeah. So you might want to think about actually just moving to a standard Android action bar, uh, or if that just doesn't suit your sensibilities, maybe moving to a drawer pattern or something. That. Absolutely. And that is definitely all the time we have, but we've uh, been able to absolutely. cover all the apps, so I'm really pleased about that. Thanks very much to our engineer, Daniel Pham, and our producer, Alex Lucas. And uh, I think it's about time to sign up. Yeah, I think we'll need to sign up. So we're going to have uh, engineer Daniel is going to come in front of the camera and absolutely. join uh, you, I think, uh, this weekend. Yes. Um, to have a look at some NFL games. Mm hmm. Uh, so that should be exciting. I'm, uh, I'm not sure what we've got uh, scheduled for next week in terms of uh, the app clinic. Do we, uh, do we know for certain? We actually haven't decided yet, but uh, you made a great post on G Plus uh, asking for um, topics. So I think uh, we should take a look at that and you know um, choose based on what people want to see. Perfect. All right. So yeah, we're that was gonna, on uh, your personal G Plus, right? It was, yeah. yeah. So we're going we're gonna to uh, go through that list and see what, uh, what you guys want us to have a look at. And uh, we'll update the moderator page. Uh, with the details for that and, uh, and look for your suggestions over the, well, what is for us here in the US at least, uh, Labor Day long weekend. Excellent. So uh, until then, um, enjoy the weekend and uh, hopefully stay tuned for the Friday games review. Goodbye, everyone.